In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, let us reflect on the passage from Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 to 33. This is also a passage in Mark chapter 6, verses 45 to 52. Commonly called Jesus walking on the water. We have also another passage that talks about Jesus calming the storm. To me, these events have a larger purpose. And I'm going to spell out one of the purposes today that I would like to bring to your notice. Commonly, in this passage, the interpretation given is the boat is the church, it's going to face storms, and there's Jesus always going to be present they to help us and reach out and save us. I want to understand the constant message of Jesus to go forth, go to the next place, go to the other side. You are referred to going across to Bethsaida and Genesaret on the other side of the lake as he has gone to pray. To me, is a point that I would like to reveal to you and place before you and let me see how this effort works. So let's try and reflect from this point of view that I see the failure to recognize Jesus. We know that the storms, the headwinds were not helping the apostles in any manner to make a progress. Remember skilled fishermen, Peter the skipper, the captain that's referring to as, along with Andrew, James and John, the fishermen, a lovely crew to just sail across. And where is Jesus coming on the waters? And they see a ghost. And they are right because their faith and tradition said a lot of fishermen, their colleagues and others had drowned, their boats had sunk, they lay buried down there and the spirits walked in the night on these waters. And therefore when they saw Jesus as a ghost, understandable. No, it isn't actually. We know that this struggle to recognize Jesus has been in some way through the Gospels till the end. First of all, John the Baptist himself when he was arrested failed to recognize the very person he baptized and ascended his disciples there to go and ask him, are you the one to come or is there someone else? You'll find this in Matthew itself, chapter 11, verses 2 to 6, and Luke chapter 7, verses 18 to 23. As you go down, you see, is this recognition a big issue? If John the Baptist is confirming, look at the situation where the confession of Caesarea of Philippi in Matthew chapter 16, verses 30 to 23, Mark 8, 27 to 33, Luke 9, 18, verses 18 to 22. Jesus had asked his apostles, Who do people say I am? And they have said, Some say you are John the Baptist, some say you are Elijah. Or one of the other prophets, Peter at that time had said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And God in Jesus had said, Only with the help of the Spirit, not the flesh and blood, can reveal this to you. So the whole part of Jesus revealing himself to them and the mission of taking them to the other side, the other side is not that side and Janasaret other side 
is our true home with God, our loving Father. And as Jesus has come to bring that to fulfillment by forming the apostolic church, forming the apostles in every significant way possible, seems to be taking this journey of the recognition, as I say, had in various ways been a struggle. We know Thomas and his doubts. You know the journey to Emmaus. And they seem to be talking but not recognizing to the very word of God. Then you have Mary of Magdala, literally taking him to be the gardener. We can go on and on like this in various occasions. And Jesus constantly keeps revealing himself. The second thing that I wish to point out to you is another story about the coming of the storm. That's again in Matthew chapter 8, 27 to 23, Mark chapter 4, verses 35 to 41, Luke chapter 8, verses 22 to 25. There we have Jesus sleeping in the boat. And here the apostles are battling a storm. They wake him up. Cry out to him and say, Save us, Lord. Do you not care? You want us to perish. Save us, Lord. Save us, Lord. Save us, Lord. We do it constantly in helplessness, terrified, anxious. The Lord always reaches out. So according to the truest prayer, that the gospel places before us is when we're helpless, we're humbled and we turn to him and say, Save us, Lord, have mercy on us. And we completely surrender and abandon ourselves to him. Keeping this in mind and labeling the call of Jesus when recognized and Peter saying, Bid me to come. And Peter takes what I would like to label as a leap of faith a little too early in his life. Takes it, walks a few steps, and then starts sinking. And the response to Jesus, here in this passage of Matthew 14, and there too, in Matthew 8, is the same. You men of little faith, why do you doubt? How are doubts overcome? How is the journey of faith going to be consistent? A big issue and a big struggle and the gospel is revealed to us and placed before us that we need to go to this challenge and not give up. Would Peter have been better off having taken the walk of faith? I'm referring here to the walk at Calvary. For Jesus had called him, James and John to come aside and pray with him for this hour to pass away. And we know there too, they slept. And Jesus was left alone to battle the storms before him. The storm that he would like to pass away. And God did not let them pass. Jesus even cried and said, Take this cup of suffering away from me. Finally saying, let thy will be done. Crying on the cross, why have you abandoned me? Why have you forsaken me? But Jesus never forsaking the will of God. He knew his father very well. And yet the pains were terrible. The sorrow too much. That walk of faith invites us to join the suffering servant, believing he's with us aboard the church, we sail through every storm. How? Jesus showed it actually that the Spirit remains with us and is never lost in prayer, a prayer of humility and surrender and abandonment to the will of God. Jesus blessed and fed Prayed. Jesus prayed as he walked towards the sea, the storm. Jesus will be praying against when he goes to Bethsaida and Genesaret. And 
asking his apostles and others to join him in healing and helping. The passage has many dimensions, but one apostolic vision would help us be his children, his faithful, his chosen ones, his worthy disciples, and points towards the struggle of the apostles and how are we going to be spared. So let us today pause for a while and ask ourselves, can we learn to recognize Jesus, the advantages that he has given us to his apostles and his church? Can we turn in prayer, day after day, hour after hour, the first watch to the fourth watch, to the day two, and ask the Lord to say, forgive us, help us, and save us. We take our own storms, not just the pandemic, but the storms that are quietly growing and rising of racism, exploitation, insensitivity, the growing hunger and diseases in the world, the battle of powers, the deception that's going on in the world. Take them to the Lord and ask Him, free us, Lord, not just feed us with the bread of life with your word and life. The Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit